Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat video. Now seeing as a lot of you really enjoyed my video on Havoc the other day, it seemed only right that we took a look at the other side of the coin, that's being the Realm of Order. And what better way to start things off by talking about the ruthless Orphantarian leader of the Seiden Guard, Hotaru. Now to really talk about Hotaru, we must in fact first talk about the Order Realm Seido and what makes it so unique in the grand scheme of things. So the big question right now is where does the Order Realm come from? Well, at the very dawn of time, there were two primordial deities, the One Being and the Elder Gods. Now these two sides did not get along well with each other, clashing on multiple different occasions, with the One Being proving itself to be the apex predator, as he needed to kill and feed on godhood in order to survive. So from here, the Elder Gods would formulate a plan. By creating Kamidogu amulets, they would use these amulets to physically separate the One Being's body, sending his consciousness into a deep slumber. So the Elder Gods were victorious, but it was not an easy battle, and it was far from over. Whilst the One Being's body was separated on different planes of reality, each fragment of his body would begin to flourish with life, giving birth to the many different races of the realms. So as you would imagine, one of these realms would in fact be the Order Realm. Whilst the gods were rather hesitant of the life born from his body, they did allow it to live, believing that these smaller individuals could in fact become something much more than the single-minded, power-hungry one being. Now, in order to make sure that these beings stayed in line, they did a sign of God to each realm, wanting them to overlook it and guide it in the right direction. But unfortunately, never at any point in time do we actually learn or hear of the God of Order. Now, let's actually talk about the inhabitants of Sado, the Sadans. The Sadans are seemingly rather peaceful individuals and on the surface resemble Earthrealmers, bearing their human features and characteristics. However, unlike Earthrealmers, they do bear some traits to that of Edenians, having an affinity for magic, and they also do age slowly, not quite to the degree of Edenian, but they do retain the features of their prime for a significant amount of time. Now, like every realm, it had to be built up, but how did this come to be? Well, what's interesting here about the Seiden is that they are all born with the belief and concept of order and control, believing that without it, their home and society would fall into to madness, chaos if you will. So unlike other realms that do somewhat struggle to get their feet off the ground, the Sadans got right to the point, forming a society and government at the dawn of time. So because of their unanimous agreement to form a society, their technological advances are beyond any other realms and in comparison to that of Earthrealm, they are leagues ahead from a technological standpoint. But this doesn't come without a cost. You see the Order Realm was a strict one and whilst everyone's job did benefit their society, there are some that broke down under the pressure, and failure was not tolerated in the Order Realm. Its own people were given extreme punishment for not following their orders, and whilst the Sadan government wasn't corrupt, they were brutal with their punishment and their laws. The Senate believed in the following, freedom leads to anarchy, anarchy leads to chaos, and chaos leads to suffering. They would have this ideology be forced upon their Sadan guards, of which Hataru was in fact the leader of, and they would enforce these rather the harsh laws and punishments across the realm. Now, as one might imagine, whilst many were happy with their lives despite the strict laws, there were some who weren't happy at all. There were some that couldn't live with these conditions, and thus a small faction called the Resistance, led by Darius, would break away from the Order Realm. So a civil war would erupt in the Order Realm and continue to go on for centuries, with neither side gaining the upper hand. Now, whilst the realm was in a stalemate with the Resistance, they did attempt to make contact with other realms, sharing a relationship with many, although it was shaky and non-existent with some. The Never Realm, Outworld, and understandably the Chaos Realm. The Chaos Realm was a world that they understandably detested. Because of its unprecedented and irregular nature, the Order Realm actively sent its guards to attack the Chaos Realm and attempt to enforce its laws upon it. But in a world that transcended normality, the Sadans were unsuccessful. Now that wasn't the only reason the Sadans invaded the Chaos Realm. You see, they attacked the Chaos Realm because of its resources. The Chaos Realms worshipped water, and it seemed like it was an endless and natural supply that was produced there. So both sides would clash against each other on a regular basis, with one wanting to protect it and one side wanting to obtain it. So with the realms being covered, let's actually talk about Hotaru properly. Now, as previously mentioned, Hotaru is the leader of the Seiden Guard, and as far as 
Aino is the only individual to hold this position. Now being a strict enforcer of the Senate, Hotaru's voice was law, and he was merciless with how he enforced their punishment. He was judge, jury, and executioner. So whilst he may have kept his home safe, there were many that fell before his blade. He's referred to and seen by many as a zealot of the council. But now this brings us up to his debut in the series, Mortal Kombat Deception. Now canonically, Hotaru makes his first ever appearance in the series during the conquest mode of the game, where protagonist Shijenko is on a mission from the gods to obtain all the Kami Dogus of each realm. So in the middle of doing this quest, it does take him to the Order Realm. On a quest for assistance from Emperor Zephyra, Shijenko would cross paths with the general as the Emperor's town, Lei Chan, was under siege by Shao Kahn. Now once Hotaru learned of Shao's involvement, he saw this as a way of pushing back against the Emperor and asserting order within the chaos. So Hotaru was most definitely interested, but could not leave his guard just yet, as the Order Realm was still battling the Resistance on their home turf. So he would have Shijinko assist him and the Saiyan guards to defeat the Resistance and the leader Darius, something that Shijinko was successful in. So Hotaru does travel to Outworld to defend it, and does take control of the city in the Order Realm's name. Now a few years would pass by, and Hotaru would appear once again in the Conquest mode, where he meets Shijinko for the first time in many years. And while Shijinko is pleased to see his old friend, Hotaru is not. You see, Shijinko was roaming outside on Sado territory after curfew, and due to the strict nature of the Order Realm, Shijinko was arrested and imprisoned in the Order Realm for many, many years. Upon being released from his restraints by Dairo, the pair would cross paths once again, with Shijinko still on his mission from the gods. Now, Hotaru understandably could not let him go, but when they fought each other, Hotaru had taught Shijinko all of his tricks, and he would be defeated by the elder man. So Shijinko would walk away victorious, but this isn't the end of Hotaru's story. After these events, the Dragon King Onaga is resurrected and makes his presence known, defeating the likes of the Deadly Alliance and Raiden, and obtain the Kami Dogu of each realm. Victory was seemingly on the horizon. Now one might expect Hotaru to be against this, as he was against Shao, but Hotaru actually believed what Onaga was selling. This somewhat goes to show the narrow mind of the Sadans, but Hotaru firmly believed that Onaga's return would bring true order to all the realms, not just the current ones that were out of place. So because of this, he would in fact align himself with Onaga during the events of Deception, and whilst under the Dragon King's service, he would be assigned the mission to track down the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei Sub-Zero and bring him before Onaga for judgement. But this is a mission he is unsuccessful in, because when he confronted the Cryomancer, he did not expect the Grand Master to be accompanied by Ken Shi, so he would be swiftly defeated by the pair. And after Onaga's fall, it does seem like Kotaru returned back to the Order Realm licking his wounds. But things were far from over, as he would return in the following installment, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Now Hotaru plays an extremely small role in Armageddon. Absent in the conquest mode of the game, he makes his one and only appearance during the climax of the game, where the forces of light are now battling the forces of darkness during the Battle of Armageddon, and Hotaru is surprisingly in the forces of darkness. During the opening conflict, he can be seen striking Li Mei through the abdomen with his spear, seemingly killing her at the very start of this battle. We do, however, at the beginning of Mortal Kombat 9, see that he has perished in this battle, being one of the many corpses scattered throughout the battlefield. And with the universe being reset by Raiden, the series is rebooted. And whilst it is not elaborated on, it can be believed that the Order Realm has been restored back to its former glory, and that not much has seemingly changed up to its debut in Mortal Kombat Deception. Now unfortunately, the reason why I say this is because while the Order Realm and Hotaru is yet to make a proper appearance in the reboot, being absent in Mortal Kombat 9, X and 11, and only making mild cameos here and there, the Order Realm itself in Johnny's ending in Mortal Kombat 9, and its most recent appearance in Mortal Kombat 11, where he features in Joker's ending, being attacked by the Clown Prince of Crime and his Chaos Realm army, and of course the reference we do get to the Order Realm in Shang Tsung's ending, as it is apparently one of the few realms that have escaped his control. So if that ending is ever pursued in future DLC, we could see the return of Hotaru, but right now it is simply a waiting game. So with that being said, that has been it for the history of Hotaru. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learnt more by doing so. As many of you do know, I do give the 3D era of games quite a hard time, as there are many half-baked designs and concepts that are unfortunately underdeveloped, but Hotaru is definitely one of those exceptions to me. He, much like Havoc, does
does shine in this era of games, being both extremely interesting in design and concept. So hopefully, with him being gone from the series for so long, it may make his chances of returning that much higher. We do have to wait and see, so fingers crossed. But yes, that's everything I do have to say here. Once again, thank you for watching this video. I really do hope you have enjoyed it. There's plenty more Mortal Kombat content on the way, and with more DLC hinted to be on the horizon, who knows, Hotaru might just be back. But until then, that's been it for this video. So before it wraps up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. And please do not forget to tick that bell, as it is a fantastic way of helping out the channel and keeping up to date with my content. Now, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care, and I'll see you all next time.